You can't put a man into a machine and then complain that he still makes humane decisions. Alex Murphy is a star graduate, a devout Catholic and a caring father. All reports say he has a great sense of duty. He was the first and the most successful candidate in the Robocop program. It all takes place in a world where a mundane news bulletin usually contains threats of nuclear war, man-made disasters, strikes, ozone layer destruction, and so on. This universe has its own infamous city of Detroit, where crime is rampant and a robber may in turn get robbed as soon as he takes the money off his victim. OCP, a techno-giant corporation, is slowly taking over the city. So much so, in fact, that they have already signed a contract, which gives them control over the city's law enforcement and finances. Obviously, this allows for testing military prototypes in urban environments. The demonstration of AT-209, a military robot, leaves the chief executive of the corporation skeptical. Because of the underdeveloped AI and a system error, an unwieldy AT-209 starts squealing and growling like a wild animal and kills one of the executives, turning him into bloody pulp. Afterwards, the younger generation of the corporates are granted permission to carry out a project requiring a human donor. Officer Alex Murphy, who was transferred to a precinct in western Detroit on that fateful day, becomes one of the likely candidates. Murphy and Lewis were chasing criminals, led by the self-proclaimed king of crime in Detroit, a sick sadist called Clarence Bodiker. Murphy's first shift in the new precinct turned out to be his last. He was mercilessly shot by Bodiker's gang, and his entire right arm was ripped off. In just a few minutes he was pronounced dead. But as we find out later, the medics managed to salvage his brain. The next time Murphy wakes up, he sees the world through an artificial optical system. Its first version was just one camera connected to his optic nerves. It was so simple that one of the engineers could twist it around with her hand. Apart from that, the engineers told the project manager that they salvaged Alex's left arm. The manager was not too happy about it. He reminded them that he'd ordered to implement a fully prosthetic body, and since Alex had signed all the papers, they are free to do whatever they want with his corpse. The Robocop's manifestation is a cyborg that may look unwieldy, but actually is quite nimble and has quick reflexes, all according to his creator's plan. His armor is made of Kevlar-coated titanium and can withstand serious firepower. In part 2 we learn that what remains of the old Alex is in fact just two pieces of flesh, described as not enough to even call it a corpse. Keeping in mind that the manager gave an order to amputate his left arm, it's possible that whatever was left of Murphy's tissue was not placed into the robot. Unlike the drug addict guy from episode 2, it was the other way around. More and more of Murphy's tissue was removed and replaced with cybernetics. We never learn what exactly was left of Murphy's human body. What's obviously there is the brain, with chips implanted to stabilize its performance. We can clearly see this in Robocop 2 and the 2014 remake, which share this approach. In Robocop 3, OCP commands Dr. Lazarus to add implants to Robocop's brain, to curb his emotional perception and response. 20 years after the release of the original film, its creators clarified that the human face we can see under Robocop's helmet is in fact Murphy's face, which was removed from his corpse and placed onto a robot's head. The head already had Alex's brain in it. The makeup for the film was executed in a way that this effect of a human face put on a robot's skull looked very believable. We can confirm that it is in fact his face, as on his forehead there's still a mark left by Bodica's bullet. But under the skin there's no muscle, just cold hard metal. According to the author's concept, even when someone has their memories and feelings erased, they still retain just a tiny spark of humanity. So if Murphy looks at himself in the mirror and sees a robot instead of a human, he might lose his mind. In the 2014 remake, Murphy's head was intact, well, most of it. Some other parts that were salvaged included his lungs, heart, thorax and left hand. Just like Kane, the drug addict cyborg, Murphy retains his spinal cord, which helps him control his robotic body. 
Basically, all organic and cybernetic elements have similar modes of interaction. From what Dr. Garcia said, it seems like there are other elements of nervous system apart from the brain that had to be used. She's an expert after all. The neural link between his organic tissue and prosthetics lets Murphy control his body. At the same time, it allows him to feel real pain. In episode 2, Kane's minions tore away Murphy's parts which had no organic elements, but still he screamed in pain. He then spent days in agony, while the finances for his treatment were under approval. The only thing that kept him alive was that his brain was stimulated by electric impulses. Pain was also a way to execute the hidden fourth directive in his mind. Robocop can't arrest OCP's chief executives, and if he tried, he'd suffer from excruciating pain. According to their logic, that's the way it works. But when Murphy sees dreams about his past life, he feels the same excruciating pain. Just like the fourth directive, a certain protective system activates when he sees these dreams. These are things he isn't supposed to see. In the 2014 Robocop, Dr. Norton wakes Murphy up by linking his spinal cord to his spine, even though he has no spine anymore. The spinal cord transmits sensory information to the brain, which helps the body adapt to and evaluate its surroundings. So this helps him get back in touch with reality, in his new body this time. The remake does a great job at answering some questions about Robocop's functionality from a scientific point of view. In the original film, Robocop had some kind of digestive system, as his organic components needed nutrients in order to function. He also had a system which imitated blood circulation, along with an artificial heart made in Japan. It was used to deliver the nutrients to his body parts. Of course, organic matter needs oxygen as well, so in the remake Robocop also has a pair of lungs. Some kind of respiratory system was also needed for the original Robocop. Robocop doesn't have an excretory system, but he still needs to remove redundant substances from his body. The remake showed us how Murphy's blood was purified. Another peculiar moment was when Dr. Norton removed Murphy's emotional responses, making him almost as emotionless as the original Robocop. This effect was achieved by installing dopamine absorption modules. However, Murphy's brain managed to override the system. Just like in the original, it was triggered by memories of his past life, particularly his murder. The scientist failed to explain the smell function. You can't put a man into a machine and then complain that he still makes humane decisions. In the original trilogy, his self-determination is unclear. Is he a man? Is he a machine? In the remake, when Murphy died for the first time, he was given a chance to feel his emotions that shaped his identity. He was horrified to learn that he became a monster, a subhuman, and would have to live on like that. In the original, despite constant flashbacks, Murphy tells Luz that he has feelings for his family, but has no memory of them. He is curious about his family, but not attached to them emotionally. Peter Waller, who played Robocop, said that even though Robocop can't rationalize and feel like a human, there is still a bit of humanity left in him. But the film never mentions any kind of emotional turmoil or negative self-determination in Robocop's mind. His main drive is his sense of duty. That's what makes him such a good cop. So is he a man or a machine? It's simple, really. His friends call him Murphy. The rest of the world calls him Robocop. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Also, leave a comment down below and share this video with your friends.